the the the, the, the craving start with the tension in the mind the body or the mind but um, with all collectedness i couldn't feel any tension but it just immediately it just flies in these thoughts flies in you know it, you don't realize that there is a that the tension is very very difficult to be seen honestly the, yeah honestly first time when i started the retreat um i was actually looking for the tension where is the tension coming in rather than focusing uh, having an attention on the uh, object of meditation the thing is this when you first start practicing you cannot see that you cannot okay it'd be very unusual if you could because uh, the level of noticing the tension in the arising craving is directly proportionate to how high or low the tension is in your body while you're practicing and so if a person is sort of struggling to see that point um, they start out with this much tension in their body they come in from the city they have this much tension in their body both of them have the same amount and when they sit down let's just look at the twin character in this case let's just look at the twin character and we'll say that when something uh when something you're practicing and then something happens where a thought comes up that looks like that and your curiosity butts in and you you, you change your direction your direction is kind of like here in front of you but you you change your direction and you go off towards looking at that and the instructions are that when this happens you are supposed to release the attention off of this and you're supposed to uh let go and relax and smile and come back now if you in the case of the twin so this is twim over here i usually put them on the on the left so i got to remind myself this is twim and when they let go of the attention off of this and they they let go they then relax now when they relax this is the interesting part because when they relax um the um let's see i i i think i'm learn need to practice what i'm doing with the okay okay when they let go and they relax what we're trying to show you is when you're practicing twim this this goes down a little bit so the next time the person is practicing they're practicing here and then the next time something pulls them away it goes down marginally again and now when they come back and continue practicing they're practicing here and so forth like this okay and where they're always moving for a reduction of the tension and the tightness in the mind and the body with the idea that nibbana is when there's no more the ability well we should say nibbana actually we shouldn't say nibbana we should say um we should say we need the eraser <laughs> there um you know we shouldn't say that it's nibbana that you're moving towards you are you're moving towards the experience of nibbana but what you're trying to do the whole time you're practicing is you're attempting to um to reach cessation state of cessation now if we were to say what is the state of cessation cessation of what this is the thing okay and it's cessation of all tension and tightness when you turn off there's a cessation of tension and tightness so when they uh, you know how we draw the line like this sometimes we say we're going along one two three four rupas and infinite space and infinite consciousness and nothingness and neither perception nor non uh perception okay when we're when we're um we're talking about going like this along those the jhana line the, it, which is considered the path okay when you're going through that and you go toward the end then you're going to fall off and you fall off when the conditions are right you move from here to here the conditions are right you're here to here the conditions are right to here to here it's like a game you know and when the conditions get right and the conditions are just letting go letting go letting go 
and relaxing, letting go, relaxing, letting go, relaxing. That's what you're doing to the tension and tightness in your mind. And you're letting it go until you get to the right, the conditions. They always say, get to the right conditions arise so that you can get to here. And conditions arise to so get to here. Conditions arise to so get to here. Conditions arise to so get here. Conditions arise for you to fall off and fall down into cessation. Then what happens is when you turn off and you go down really fast, you turn back on. And when you turn back on, that's when you rise up as you're turning back on and the opening happens here. And the opening is the experience of Nibbana, okay? Now let's get something straight here because there's a lot of mix up about this right now. Uh, <laughs> Nibbana is a city, Nibbana is a place, Nibbana is the next country we're going to, <laughs> you know, Nibbana is this, Nibbana is that. Nibbana turns out to be the experience of this opening, okay? And the best I can explain it to you in modern times is you just rebooted your mind. I really like this description, like rebooting your computer when you get in trouble and you're stuck. That's me, <laughs> and I can't make it work. <laughs> so if I have to reboot, what happens to the OS system in your computer is you reboot to it almost like a default and then turn it back on in hopes that that's all that was wrong and it's erased. And now we start again from the beginning and we can, and things will operate, okay? Well, that's kind of like what this is. That's kind of like what this is. It's like a rebooting here. This is where you turned the computer off, where you fell down here, where you rebooted it. And it takes, you know, sometimes a couple of minutes to go doot, 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 and come back on. Well, those doot, doot, doots were the links of dependent origination going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And you're back on again fully and you go and open the mind. It opens into a default state. And the default state is your computer's there. Wow, thank you. <laughs> now I can run. <laughs> and for us, what happens is we have this opening where we can see like little kids again, briefly, but we can see just like a little child sees, we can smell and taste and hear and touch just like the experience of a young child. Now, how long does it last? How long are you going to take care of it? How long are you going to take care of that newborn baby, you see? And they're just beautiful when they come out and they start and everything is just wonderful until, <laughs> until you have one with colic or one that can't stop pooping or, you know, well, it's the same thing here. It's just beautiful when it starts out and you see this fresh thing. And in our case, how long is it going to be? When, when, you are, um, when you are here in this, in this state now, this nibonic state, okay, how long are you going to be like that depends on this. This is the part, the past and the future. And you are, are here, like right here. You have taken, remember the little car? I'm always showing you the little car like this, right? Like that. And I'm always showing you, this is your little car and you're, you're driving along like this in life. But the problem is your car is usually full of stuff from the past and you're driving cautiously because you're worried about what's in the future. So you don't just drive. Now, all of a sudden, the car is just like a brand new vehicle all over again. How long is it going to be before you put the past, bring it up and start massaging it again, how long is it going to take before you start worrying about the future more than you need to in a single day? And how long is that going to take to botch the car up again and not have it run quite right? See? So this is what's going on in this whole process. Now the question is there, how do I see the arising of the, of the uh, how do I see the arising of the craving sooner, the tension and tightness early? Now, I'm going to show you something with this other character over here for just a minute, because when he, when he has a hindrance come up, and here's a strange one for him over here, okay, there's a little strange guy, when he is moving from his direction, let's say he was meditating in this direction, 
and then his attention is pulled over, it's not like there's only my attention is here or my attention is here. Your attention can be most of the time, it's number one for the beginner. It's always, it's always right here. Okay. Because you don't notice you're off your object of meditation till you're on the hindrance. But the second one could have been that you noticed it when you were moving over towards it. And the third one could have been, you could have developed well enough that as this, as this um, tension is reducing, the further down it reduces, the faster you can detect the arising of the craving. Do you get it? You see what I'm saying, Jay? So the craving is arising, but this person can't really see it. If this is how much tension they have here, they can't notice it until it pushes, like it pushes, it pushes above this. Then they start to see it. So they, it's hard for them to catch it before it moves over. Do you get what I'm saying? So the craving has these three levels that you're developing through. And so where, where is the person when, when, um, where is the person when, when the person, uh, how do I say it? When the person is, uh, reach the stage where they automatically have the six hours working, where are they? They're right here. They're right here. Okay. Right there. They sense it. They can even be sensing it rising from the heart upwards to the mind. They feel, you know, you feel things. This is interesting. You should think about this. Do, when you feel something, do you feel it in your head first or your heart first? And most people will answer me and they'll say, I felt it in my heart first. And then I registered in my head and I started thinking about it. And this is where we, we think, we're not sure, but we believe that the, in the time of the Buddha, they believed the location of the mind wasn't here. The location of the mind was in the heart. So this is where heart mind comes in uh, because we sense things before we react to anything, process very quickly and react. We actually feel it in our heart, don't we? Think about this and test it for yourself. Okay. And so... This person over here, whose tension is this high, can't feel anything till here. But if this person has their tension is, uh, is down lower, you know, their tension has gotten to this point, like real low. And, and your, your chakras also, let's see what your chakras are. Your chakras are running. Your chakras are running through your body like this, you know, through it like that. Okay, so depending, you might feel it in your gut, you might feel it in your heart, you might feel it in your throat. You could before it reaches up a place where the brain is going to do something about it. You see, do you see what I'm trying to say? So I'm trying to, I'm trying to show you the differentiation of the different ways that people are experiencing this. And why should I, why shouldn't I struggle to see it? Don't, don't struggle to see it. Just keep six R'ing. Just let go, relax, smile, come back. And you'll get the lower the tension goes, the sooner you can uh, sense the arising of uh, the tension and tightness of the craving. And pretty soon the mind, the brain puts this together, puts it together that when tension is arising, you actually want me to forgive whatever this is and just with loving kindness, uh, you know, let it go, relax, smile, come back. That's what you really want me to do. And here's the interesting thing. Our brain loves TWIM. <laughs> our brain, the more we use it, our brain likes it. But our our uh, brain in this practice, we do not pressure the brain to push to, how do I say it? 
we don't direct our energy through our, our head so much to make thinking happen and sort of uh which leads to a reaction a personal reaction and so when we stop doing that with our brain taking thing changing to an impersonal perspective and remembering looking at the world the way it's naturally happening uh that we can use this impersonal perspective then there is not so much tension and um if we don't have the tension in our mind we simply the brain gets used to that comfortable way of being in more open mind giving you more ability to stop quickly you should when you're practicing you should get to a place where it's easier for you to work I don't care what you're doing if you're doing comp computer programming or analysis or bookkeeping or uh, office management work or manufacturing work you should what simultaneously happens with the development of this practice is there's more openness for your mind to use the potential of your brain and so you can stay in a focused place without stress though without headaches without exhaustion because your brain is cooperating with you okay you're not pushing it around and if something comes up you don't go i have to stop that i have to make that stop we don't do that why well because we taught you the knowledge behind the hindrances and by teaching you that knowledge of what is the nutriment of the hindrance then we're showing you if you take away the the supply for this hindrance take away the nutriment the food then it fades away and the pressure all goes away okay so to answer your question how do i get to see that it's not a priority to see it as much as keep practicing and if you if you're practicing on a daily basis keep the the pieces in mind you don't have to think think, think about all this stuff you know all the time that's not what i'm really saying um what i'm actually saying to you is you have a lot of information when you're practicing with us we give you a lot of stuff but gradually what the brain is doing with it is saying oh look that's another piece of the puzzle oh that one fits to this one oh and this one it fit right there with that one and they hooked to that and all of a sudden you see all this stuff in buddhism is actually a jigsaw puzzle that actually comes together and it goes just like this and can turn into an actual weaving an actual weaving like this you see it can hook together at first it seems like i'm throwing you into a bucket with lots of stuff and there are many monks that feel we cannot teach you this stuff this is only to be taught to monks because it's a brain it's a brain puller it's like a, you're going to think about it all the time how do i hook this to that to that to that to that, to that, to that? <laughs> and yeah and you think about oh my gosh i gotta go to abhidhamma class now i gotta go to the poly class i can only learn it if i know poly and da 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 da, da and it goes on and on and on but you actually can establish the motions and the movement of your practice down the path as a meditator to help open the brain so that you can then learn poly and then go in and look at it from the poly perspective and if you want to do abhidhamma later after you've got your practice going certainly do it but you won't get as many headaches you see abhidhamma is so interesting to me you know because the abhidhamma if i started rattling some of it off to you you'd say well we know about that we know about that we we know about that part and yes you do because the abhidhamma sources from the text what he was teaching in the suttas six of this six of that seven of that five of that and gutra nikaya is a good example of a source book for abhidhamma think about it ones twos threes fours fives up to twelves you know and i'm thinking why are they uh, sort of pitting these things against each other when uh you know right now uh there's a thing about theravada might be fading away you see 
And there's a big push toward oh, Mahayana it might be pushing more to be the big, big vehicle. Yeah, but you know where the big vehicle came from? This is what's funny. The big vehicle came from the elder school, and that's the Theravada. The big vehicle didn't just form itself out there in no man's land in the dark. They came down and took the suttas back and then wrote their own, their set of agamas. And the agamas, that's why they look so much like the suttas, because they came from the suttas. So it's like saying, well, the child is growing up and, and the mother only got as far as eighth grade, you might say, or, or say the, through, through high school. But the child is going to go through college and get degrees and master's degrees and all of this stuff. So then the, they're superior to the mother. Are they? Are they superior to the mother? Should they just dismiss the mother? <laughs> you, know? you know, and I'm thinking this is this is a wrong kind of thinking. We want to be very, very careful. Because remember, after the Buddha's gone, what happened? You know, we had the preservation oral and the practice still operating as meditators. But then the moment they wrote it down, they caused a division and a permanent competition between academics and meditators. See? And they divided the whole structure. And so this is like uh, somebody said... Um, my my husband got his uh, i remember his my husband got his master's degree and uh, he said you know uh, what is more important though uh when you put two people on the stage in front of a whole bunch of young people and one is a jet fighter pilot and the other one is a guy with his phd which one are they going to go spend time talking to they're going to go to the jet fighter pilot and he's in his mask and everything with his tube coming out in his face. Wow, that's really cool, you know. And I'm there like, yeah, but what, what happened to the, to the academic who had the core of the knowledge, the body of the knowledge and everything just got left over here? You see, some people get upset about that. It's, it's sort of like yin and yang. We don't need yin. I'm yin, you're yang. You sit over there, I'll sit over here. Let's disconnect. Well, that doesn't work so well. <laughs> you, see, you should look at yin and yang sometime. Look it up and spend a little time with it on the computer. Yin balances yang and yang balances yin and yin, yang, yang, yin. <laughs> you, know, you can't, you, you know, this thing, what is it? Like this and like, I can't do it. Like this, yeah, like this and like this. Yeah, like that, like these two, like that. See, yin, yang. <laughs> And I always thought, you know, how, uh, let's see you pump that guy's heart and save his life if your hands are not like this when you do it. Let's see you do it with one hand. Can't do it. <laughs> you can't do it. You don't worry about seeing this, but you will see it at the point where your tension in your body lowers and lowers. And then if you keep supporting it, and if you're not sitting quite long enough, start sitting a little longer, sit 10 minutes longer, see what happens. And um, sometimes that's enough to get you into a more clear area to understand what's happened. Some of you I know here, some of you have practiced uh, shifting it around and seeing what happens if you increase it 10 minutes, you see? I mean, an hour is divine, but we don't all have an hour before we're going to go to work. If some of us don't, then you take, you, you try to take 30 minutes also. We've always said 30 minutes is the minimum, but then you have the 40 minute wonder <laughs> and everybody's working at 30 minutes and this person can't make it work. And finally it dawns on you. Oh, it's a 40 minute wonder. So you say, give me 10 minutes more and bingo. They just got out of the corral and they're just galloping down the path. They're going. So don't let yourself get in a rut <clears throat> if you are practicing between 30 minutes and an hour, okay? An hour is more stable and consistent. Um, and then once on the weekend, if you can go somewhere where you can go without a clock, because I think important, an important part of all this is to experience a time slip. And a time slip, I call it a time slip, is where suddenly you say, you know, Sister Kama, I just discovered that time 
doesn't exist. <laughs> you come to me and tell me that. And I say, oh, you just experienced a time slip. And, you and this is when you come out of a sitting and it feels like you only sat for maybe 20 minutes or maybe 30, but actually sat for one or two hours. But, you, but you, it felt like it couldn't have been more than 10 minutes or 20 minutes long. And what that is, is time slip. Your brain got to a spot where it just forgot there was any information about time in your head at all. And it just, it isn't an element, it left, see? And that's valuable, because now remember you had a time slip. And once you had this time slip, it becomes much easier for you to sit, okay? Because mind, it's just not concerned. If you set the buzzer, okay, it's going to go along. It's going to go along and operate. You can stop when you hear the buzzer, but it's not going to be, there's not going to be a tenseness. When is the buzzer going to ring? Da, 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 so much. It's going to let you be, yeah? 